I'm Stephen Finn. I'm here with Stuart Broad. Um, we're here preparing for the third Investec Test match against South beautiful Africa Lord. at beautiful Lords Cricket Ground. We we'll just have a quick just pan in, pan out. Yeah, this is where we look from. Um, you can see everything from here. Beautiful ground, obviously. It's a bit wrecked after the Olympics. You can see the mess that the Olympics have made of our of our hallowed turf, but we'll get on with it. We're looking forward to it. And I'm here to ask Stuart a few questions ahead of tomorrow's game. Um, the first question that I've got here is from Alistair Riddle. Um, and what's the favourite wicket you've ever taken? Um, I think my, my favourite wicket I've ever taken, looking back, was probably at my home ground at Trent Bridge um, on a hat trick against India last year. Um, as I was running in, I could feel like an amazing sense of atmosphere. Um, managed to sneak it through the gate and it, and it bowled Kumar. And, uh, and off I went, sort of doing a bit of a doing the aeroplanes. Bit of an aeroplane. I didn't really know what came over me there, but uh, on a personal that was probably my favourite wicket because getting a hat trick in any cricket's um, a great feeling. But because the twelfth Englishman ever to do it, which is a, a nice feeling. Um, favourite wicket, sort of team-wise, was probably here at Lords last year against India. Again, we we had to bowl India out on the final day. Uh, we worked really hard to do it on quite a flat wicket and. Um, I managed to pick up the number 11, the last wicket to win as a test matcher, um, to get us off to a good start in the series. Uh, and so the boys certainly were, were delighted with that one. Well bold, Stu. The next one, a bit of a comical question. Um, and as the interviewer, I hope you look nicely upon me in this question. This is from Dominic Kane. Uh, and you have to choose between having Swanee's teeth, Finn's nose, or Pryor's hair. Personally, though, I think the combination of the three would be a pretty ugly human being. <laughs> but, uh, you know, considering I'm sitting here as your interviewer, what, what would you prefer? Um, I think I'd go with Swanee's teeth because... Fixable? Exactly. Bearing in mind we've not signed a contract here that it locks me into like a two-year deal. True. I'd get them. Win the prize money or whatever you're giving me for yep. them, and then just get him. And then get them done. Nip down Harley, Street, nip down Harley Street to yeah, a dentist clinic done. and get them done. And it's probably the cheapest. Like, I'd imagine a new rug or a nose job is quite expensive. Depends where you get your rug from, I think. <laughs> and nose jobs, yeah, they're not cheap. I've looked into them. Don't worry. This is from Adam Davies. Uh, who is the best fast bowler of all time, in your opinion? Uh, it's a very close mix between Glenn McGrath and Sean Pollock. Admired both of them as amazing cricketers. Um, McGrath had an unbelievable record um, from what he did. He seemed to sort of be able to move it on every wicket. Uh, and I probably saw more of him with the Ashes battles against England. It always makes me a bit sad that I can never think of an English bowler I can name as one of my heroes. Angus Fraser? Uh, <laughs> um, but like my growing up period was McGrath and, and Pollock, so I, I always look at them in. Great regard. The next question is from Lucy, um, and the question is, what would be the best thing about swapping bodies with Finney for 48 hours? Considering this isn't X-rated and we've got to keep it clean. Um, I can't mention that. Like, no, you can't. No, you can't person. mention that. You can't mention that. No, no, you, you got to mention something else. Um, but what would be the best thing about swapping bodies with me for 48 hours? Well, we're not overly dissimilar. Are no, we're there, not. To no. Be honest. Very You've true. You've probably got another inch on me. In height. In height, okay, um, yeah. So I'm sort of used to being my six foot six frame, so if I see a door frame on my eye line, I know I can just give it a little <laughs> nod underneath. I reckon that extra inch would be a bit of a nightmare. You've got to get the full on duck on. I've been yeah. guilty when and I've had a few to drink. I reckon if I had your body for a few days, I wouldn't, I'd cut my head a few times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so that would be the worst thing. The best thing. Come on, mate, it's not that bad. I reckon <laughs> that extra inch could give you. Looking over crowds at concerts is always a bonus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy myself. It's not like you've ripped with a six pack or got hey, amazing packs. We don't, we don't know that yet. We don't know that. <laughs> well, I do. They can still develop, don't worry. <laughs> this is from Mahe Mobbin. What do you do to occupy yourself on a long flight? Um, I'm a good sleeper on flights. Excellent sleeper. I don't mind um, a cheeky film to start. Maybe a little bit of football manager. Nice. Um, until the battery runs out. Who's your team top. on football manager? You're a Man City man, I can see it. You're a, a Man bit. City man, aren't you? I started with Forest, but 
I need a budget. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a manager, I'd have to go to the board of directors and say, look, lads, I need something to work with here, not, not 600 grand. Uh, so Man City, you just plough your 90 mil and it's a bit easier. But So I do like finding out the best players in the game and, and doing that. But then once, I, once I've been doing that for an hour or so, um, that's me to snooze. I can easily bang out 10 hours on a flight. Yeah, you, you're a good sleeper. You don't need a sleeping pill either, do you? No. That's exceptional work. The next one is from Kelly, uh, and she wants to know who your favourite F1 driver is. Now, your association with Red Bull might mean that you're, you're going to err towards the Red Bull drivers, I presume. Um, I'm a Red Bull fan. Fan. Um, and actually, probably the only Australian I support in sport is Mark Webber. Right. Um, so I always want him to, to do well in the, in the Grand Prix. English-wise, I think Jensen Button looks a really like, nice bloke. I'd like, like to, to see him do well. He's had a bit of a tough year with his car and stuff. But um, yeah, being, having been in the Red Bull paddock at the Grand Prix, which is an amazing experience, I think um, Mark Webber, I always would like to see Mark Webber do well. OK, this is from Prakash Galani. Um, and he wants to know, how did it feel when you were named International 2020 Captain of your country? Uh, of course, it's a, a big honour any time you, you captain any side, let alone your country. Um, but what excites me is the, the guys we've got around the squad. Uh, it's quite a young squad. Um, you could class it as a bit of an inexperienced squad, but everyone's keen to learn, everyone buys into the team ethic. Um, and we've had some success with that. It's a very uh, energetic side when we're out there. Um, and guys are always putting in, in training that that relates to the um, game. So um, I think the guys are beginning to understand the roles that have sort of been asked to get in the side and, and reacting to that. And you can see that in some of the performances. Yeah, nice. Uh, and it's, it's nice that you picked me in one day cricket in 2020 cricket. Thank you for that. Um, you, <laughs> um, who is your best friend in the team? And this is from Sarah Wag. Um, to be honest, I mean, we spent. <laughs> Sorry, James Anderson. He just. Playing the fort. Standard. By James, yeah, standard. Northern uh, monkey. Um, I'm sure you can say it. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> um, best friend in the, I mean, we're lucky. We spend a lot of time together, so I think all the guys get on really well with each other. Um, I've always been good friends with Luke Wright uh, down, at, down at Sussex. I've not seen him in a little while since he's got married and kids. He's gone off the face of the earth. <laughs> um, we spend a lot of time with Matty Pryor. Um, it's... it's yeah, I roomed with him on my first A tour as an 18, 19 year old and I'd never met him before and been really good mates ever since. So we play a lot of golf together and drink a bit of red wine together, that sort of thing, which um, I mean, I say I enjoy everyone's company, but I probably spend the most amount of time with him. And this, we've got a couple left. Um, this is quite a good one, linking from what you just said. Uh, what sport would you play if you didn't play cricket? Now, having seen you play golf over the last six months or so your game's developed and evolved exceptionally but you still play off an 18 handicap so can can you please explain this to me and if you keep going in the vein that you're going there's a chance that you might be playing off scratch within another three or four months the way I've seen you striking the ball recently. My game's changed and it's all down, <laughs> I had some clubs fitted I think being a six foot six bloke trying to use rego clubs I was wondering why I kept like topping it uh, so I had some clubs fitted like made longer and my game's turned around I was 18 to start the year I'm down to 13 now um, I have been playing quite a bit, but I always enjoyed my hockey when I was younger. I always had a big aim to be the Great Britain goalkeeper in the Olympics. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Until I got to 17 and I came a bit scared of it because it's, uh, it can get like flicked, slapped and undercoated. Yeah, don't, don't so look, don't look I was pretty sport. fearless at that age, but now I, I think I'd be pretty scared to, to do it. But uh, I know Investec's connection with the, the girls team, um, I want to sort of get down there and and uh, do a bit of goalkeeping there at the time. Yeah, we, the, the watchful eye of Stuart Ball's best friend in the dressing room, Matt Pryor. He's it's just so keep, boring. He's just keeping, he's keeping an eye on him, he's keeping him honest. Well, Matt, so we're just talking about the, the, uh, the, the, the girls' team. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about my golf skills, actually. We also yeah, golf had, skills? Yeah. Golf skills, not girls' skills. We also had the question, <laughs> what would you prefer, Finney's, uh, Finney's nose, Swanee's teeth, or Matty P's hair? <laughs> <laughs> what did you go for? I think uh, the beard's sensational, Matt. Thank you very much. Right. Exceptional beard, beard of the year. I teeth because I just get them and then get them redone. Fair point. Well, it's the easiest. Fair but point. Then, mate, 
but yeah, they're not, they're not great teeth. I, I think I'd take the nose. The know. nose, the nose. It's not that bad a nose. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> oh wow! Is it that bad? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, viewers, not from that angle. <laughs> That's a poor angle. You can even see the media center. Oh, uh, it's a good nose. Um, Just grow your hair long and then pull it over your nose. Question for me. Yeah, we've got one more question. You don't want to keep the viewers here all day. No, although I'm sure they're loving it. Um, Oh, we've got two more. I've got two more questions for you. They're both good ones. Right. This is from Annie Morgan. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done on a date? Ooh. Under the pump here. Big time under I the pump. How many times I've embarrassed myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't really like dates, to be fair. I was finding a bit awkward. The best thing is I go to a show in London so you don't really have to speak. Nice. That's what I did last <laughs> time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a big like dinner date person just because you've got to chat. Chat's <laughs> average, you know. You need like a bit of road there. You need to go but... somewhere where you can just use your pal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I haven't really done anything to him, but I've not like crushed my car picking him up or nice. sworn at the father or anything like that. No, those would be pretty bad. Um, What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done on a date? What is the most embarrassing thing I've ever done on a date? Um, Tell I've us. done plenty. Of, yeah, I've done plenty of embarrassing things. Uh, trip, just stupid things like tripping over, so throwing, actually stacking it. Actually, to the floor. yeah, like stacking it like up a set of stairs to the floor. That's quite embarrassing. Um, I actually did have an embarrassing moment. I cool. Remember, here we go. On a date in Leeds. Bad start. <laughs> yeah, um, poor this start. This was in my youth. I had a, I have a Peugeot two hundred six or something. Nice. Not a new one. Nice. Like an old one. And I picked her up. Had the meal or whatever, went to drop her home, the car wouldn't start. <laughs> I've had a very similar one actually. <laughs> no, I was properly, you know, like, don't let me down, don't let me down. <laughs> oh no, could I borrow your phone please? <laughs> so I didn't see her again. She's kicking stuff now. Yeah, I had a poor one actually. I had, we like, we Ford Fiesta, purple, Enreg, yeah, but incredible, got me from A to B. Uh, stopped in a car park. Nothing suspicious. Listen, like sat there listening to music, like car engine off. Looks extremely suspicious. <laughs> car engine off. Put the stereo on. So listen, like just sat there, like had the doors open, lying on lying on the grass outside. Uh, went to get back in the car, wouldn't start. Stranded in the car park in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> had to call the AA and and get it called out. Anyway, moving on. Nothing suspicious. <laughs> no, there was nothing suspicious. I was 17, lying mate. On the I'm as innocent person as they come now let alone when I was younger. Last question from Phil Savile, bit of an odd question from a bloke, but will you ever be growing your glorious hair back? Um, <laughs> didn't impress me. No, that's not impressed me. Um, right. To be honest, I, when I look back at pictures of me with longer hair, it makes me cringe a little bit. Um, but I'm a never say never guy. It was beautiful. But then even Steve, like you look at pictures of when you were oh, it was a howler. Oh my God, mine was a howler. <laughs> mine was like, a mop. I've got pictures when I was bowling with my hair like up here, like <laughs> stood on its end. Like can't get away with that. And it's just a lot easier to deal with, like coming to training in the morning. Oh, well, having to having to shampoo and condition every day. See, I never got that. I never understood what was involved with all that. I just sort of hacked around, and it was it was a phase that I went through. The highlights were exceptional. The, the blonde highlights. It was blonde, wasn't it? It was yeah. very blonde. I mean, I've, I'm quite fortunate I go very blonde in the sunshine. Like, if I go away for a winter, my hair's like bleach blonde. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't see it coming back in the near future. Probably when I'm like 40 and having a midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. You, and it'll be gone to there, like, and just you, long at the back. You'll be driving a drop top Porsche. Yeah. Or Lotus Elise. Or Lotus like. Elise. <laughs> drop top. Right, well, that's it. Me and Stuart, we're over and out um, here at Glorious Lords.